Right. How, how much do you uh, and Fonte and AJ work on deep balls during the off season, during the season? And is that something that the more you guys, I mean, you've been together a long time, but the, that chemistry just keeps getting better? Um, it's been a, a bit sporadic this season, just with guys being in and out. But we, we naturally have a good chemistry, just knowing those guys for a very long time, throwing with those guys for a very long time. So that's why I think it's important to always put in that off-season work because – you just continue to develop the chemistry with your guys. You've hunted, you've hunted for one-on-one -on -one matchups in previous offenses. What about this framework makes that process better? Say that again? You've, you've looked for one-on-one -on -one matchups in previous offenses in your Johnson. Mm -hmm. like, what about this framework you know, makes that process better? I don't think it's any different. I think every offense tries to take advantage of matchups, um, whatever is presented on the field. You know, um, a lot of things are consistent throughout throughout every offense. And the, uh, the stats for Cincinnati's defense maybe aren't great, but when you watch them on tape, what do you see? Well, I, I, I think they're a great defense. I think they're a great team. Um, they're a gritty team. They find ways to to win, a competitive team. Um, front seven definitely stands out, and then their, their DBs make plays on the ball. So um, we, we got a, we got a good uh, good challenge ahead of us. What kind of challenges does Lou Aaron remote present to an opposing quarterback? Um, just, just uh, he, he presents you different looks. Um, he, he has a lot in his arsenal. So I think for us, we just got to go out there and play clean, play clean football, and everybody got to be on the same page. How far back do you go with Burrow? As far as? So, I mean, any, like, high school all-star stuff, or was it not to the college ranks where you guys first kind of crossed paths? Yeah, we crossed paths in college. So what, was the, uh, what was it like? Going through the you know the Heisman process and all that sort of stuff with him, did you get to know him? And yeah, um, you know, got to hang out with all of the guys, and I think it was a fun overall experience. Obviously, got a ton of respect for him. Jalen, there was a play uh, last week where there was some pressure coming, and, and you went down. It seemed like untouched. I'm just curious in moments like that, how do you balance going down versus maybe wanting to extend the play? Um, it's managing the game, uh, managing the game, and I think that was a that was a moment where I said we. We uh, we got pressure and you know we just take this one. Hadn't really had any momentum going at that point. First downs. What needs to be better? We need to get first downs. <laughs> I mean, I mean we're in third and long all the time, so we got to change that. <laughs> Stay out of the sticks. The uh, the last two games you hooked up with AJ, you know, for 40 yard passes, like in, in critical situations. Um, you know, the fourth down against the Giants, and then late in the game against. Browns. What is it about um, having that trust, you know, in AJ, and, and what enables you to do that? Like it's such a critical juncture. I think that goes to the chemistry that you, that we talked about earlier in the previous question, the first question of um, just building that chemistry. Obviously, we got a great rapport with one another. It's shown throughout the years, and hopefully, it continues to show. Yeah, you've been around uh, Kenny Gainwell for four years now. Um, what is? It's not an easy position he's in. He doesn't know when he's going to play, if he's going to play, how much he's going to play. Uh, what have you seen from him as far as the way he's handled that role? Yeah, um, I think he's def definitely um, one of the most selfless guys on the team when it comes to embracing his role and giving up himself in any way he can to help the team win. You know, and he comes in like a wrecking ball um, with, a, with a lot of energy, um, a lot of passion, and a lot of hunger. So, um we all know that everybody moments come, um, and his moment, you know, he'll he'll continue to get opportunities. Um, but I'm just happy that he's um, just pressing for it every day. The, the, the tush push, the tush push has been successful again this year. There was some thought after I think you guys were one for three opening night that oh maybe it won't work anymore, Jason. Is it in your mind still an important play? And we'll, I mean, what do you feel about that play? Um, I mean, whatever works, whatever works. Um, Whatever works. We get in these situations, and it's obviously something we can use to our advantage. So, want to continue to use it. After the after meeting Burrow at the Heisman, was there any off the field interactions y'all had since? Um. Hmm. Yeah. As far as big plays, the benefit's obvious, but do you think it's possible to be too reliant on big plays? Um. No, I think. I mean, we, we talk about identity, but I think that's a part of our identity. So I think that's something people got to accept. 
kind of follow up to that. You talked about the importance of like getting the first down, the first first down on the opening series. Do you feel like sometimes those shots can kind of take the offense out of rhythm? Just you know, kind of seeing the kind of like those easy completions, like seeing the ball, you know, completed. I guess. Um, it's just, it's just about um. You know, I talk about the importance of getting first downs. There's multiple ways to do that. And it doesn't have to be a, a down the field shot, obviously. Um, but I think, you know, it's a matter of executing what's called and everybody being on the same page and being committed to what we're doing. And so we gotta we gotta do it cleaner. You know, it's it, it's it's been some funky things that have happened. You have a tip ball, you have, you know, a false start, you know, we're not really helping ourselves in these situations. So that's why I'm excited about what's to come because it's all things that we can fix. And um, it's been different things that have come up in each game. So uh, the mo most important things is coming out early and staying, staying ahead of the sticks. And that's procedurally. That's um, executing-wise and um, just getting positive plays. And so I think if we can help ourselves with that, find ourselves in a different situation. Sorry. Are you kind of saying there's no common theme to what has happened in the first quarter? I mean, that you can't really find – one thing that, or several things that have led to that. Yeah, I just think you need positive plays. That's just what it comes down to. You see every, when the second quarter it turns on because we get positive plays. So um, you just got to do a better job of that, and I think we're finding it. Yeah, on a non-football question, um, I noticed you changed your Jordans quite a bit up during the game. Is that like a superstition thing? Is it the field? Like I'm trying to find my footing. I just wanted to ask you one more thing about the Jason talked about when before he ran that play, he would say, "Oh f, here here we go again." You're in the middle of it. You you feel it. What goes through your mind right before you run that play? Get however many yards I need to. Uh, nothing really more than that. Never never. Oh, here we go again. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Circle back to the third downs. Um, that's over three on third and short, but point three for three on fourth downs. For you personally, when you're in that third down situation, do you know you have two cracks at it, and that affects kind of how how you operate there? Um, no, I think uh, I think I can continue to mature in those areas. Obviously, you want to. Um, there's a uh, there's a component where we're told not to worry about certain things. And then there's a com component where I feel like I need to worry about it, um, even though I'm not supposed to. So. Um, you know, coach coach goes for it on fourth down because he trusts us, you know, and he believes that we can, you know, make a play. Um, and how healthy that is, you know, <laughs> we go out there and make it work, you know, typically. So, um, you know, that's always the mentality, regardless of of what's what's going out, what's going on. You know, we want to go out there and execute, and we're really not thinking about um, some of those things because we, we're just told not to. We just want to uh, execute the play that's called. Yeah, what's, the, what's the acclimation process like when you have a new blindside protector? And what have the conversations been like with Fred as you guys are getting used to each other? Yeah, I think that's something that um, has definitely been different. I mean, um, it's a different pocket. You know, it's a different pocket. You got different guys in there. It's been, um, you know, a new set of guys almost um, every game, you know, for a few consecutive games now. So um, we're finding our rhythm in that. You know, Fred's doing a really good job. Um, he's attentive and um, you know, he's all ears and, you know, he, he know he has a, a ton of guys that help him um, next to him. So um, I think I think the pocket is a little bit different, you know, um, no different than, you know, having a new set of guys out wide out there. It's no different. But, you know, you find ways to adjust and overcome. Thank you. Thank you. Yep.